Devotee. Welcome to the Ascent of Mount Carmel. Today we're going to finish up the sixth chapter of the second book. We've mentioned the soul quite a bit in past installments, but we've never really discussed exactly just what is it. Well, a soul can neither be seen or touched because it's a spirit and it's immortal. The soul is the noblest part of a man because it's the spiritual substance of a man endowed with intelligence and will capable of knowing God and possessing him in all eternity. Aristotle wrote that a soul has intellectual ability. And in his Summa, St. Thomas Aquinas agreed that intellect is a power of the soul. St. John of the Cross was influenced quite a bit by St. Thomas Aquinas. And he tells us that the soul's intellect has three faculties. And they are understanding, memory, and will. In future chapters, St. John will describe how we can darken the three intellectual faculties and purify all that is not God. We are emptying and darkening ourselves in regard to how we think of spiritual things in God. St. John tells us that the soul is not united to God through our senses or through the intellectual faculties. It is also not united through how we imagine what spiritual things might be like. We are trying to rewire ourselves in that regard to our three intellectual faculties. You may recall in the last installment, we discussed the three theological virtues, faith, hope, and charity. And throughout our lives, the three faculties have helped to direct the three theological virtues. But now it's time for us to do the exact opposite. The faculties must be buried by withdrawing and detaching ourselves from our lifelong habits so that the soul may lean upon the three theological virtues and journey unencumbered by the faculties. The faculties will eventually be informed by the virtues rather than the other way around. And this will enable a soul to come to union with God. Each of the theological virtues is affected by a corresponding faculty of the soul's intellect. The first theological virtue, faith, is the virtue by which we believe in God. And that is affected by the faculty of understanding. The second theological virtue is hope. And that's the virtue by which we have a desire and have an expectation of eternal life, as well as with divine union. And that's affected by the faculty of memory. The third theological virtue is charity. And that's the virtue by which we love God and our neighbor. And that is affected by the faculty of the will. So let's discuss the relationship between the faculties and the virtues one at a time. The first intellectual faculty of our soul is understanding. Faith causes emptiness and darkness in regard to understanding. Faith tells us what cannot be understood by that faculty. Now faith is the substance of all things to be hoped for, the evidence of things that appear not. Although the understanding may consent to things that we hope for, if those things had been revealed to the understanding directly, there would be no need for faith. So faith, although it brings certainty to understanding, does not bring clearness. Therefore, if we darken our understanding, faith brings the obscurity and darkness that we are looking for in the dark night of the faith. The second intellectual faculty of the soul is memory. Now, St. Thomas Aquinas divides memory into two kinds. Sensory memory is related to the memories from our five senses, such as memories of what we have seen or what we have tasted. But this is not the type of memory St. John is referring to in regard to the faculties of the soul. What he's talking about is the intellectual memory, the second type of memory, that receives and stores up abstract and universal concepts. St. John tells us that hope creates an emptiness in our memory. As we've been purging ourselves of our desires, we may have already felt an emptiness or dryness from our possessions. And this has come through the theological virtue of hope. It makes the memory empty and dark to both spiritual and sensual things. And this is because hope centers on things that we don't have. If something is tangible, if it's something that we already have, there's no need for hope. Hope produces emptiness because it has to do with things that are not possessed and not with that which is possessed. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, what doth he hope for? Please note that this is just one more piece of scriptural evidence that man is not saved by faith alone. Faith and hope are separate theological virtues. The third intellectual faculty is the will. Charity causes an emptiness in the will, 
and detachment from all affection and from embracing or rejoicing in anything that is not God. This emptiness in the will in regard to all things is because we are obliged to love God above them all, which we cannot do unless we withhold our affection from other things in order to set our will wholly upon God. Every one of you that doth not renounce all that he possesseth cannot be my disciple. Just as a person needs to form their conscience, we need to form our intellectual faculties by the three virtues. We need to inform each faculty and strip it and set it in darkness concerning all things except the three virtues themselves. St. John tells us that in this method we can find security against the sneers and deceits of the devil and against self-love. Self-love is something that tends to subtly deceive and hinder spiritual seekers when they don't know how to become detached and follow what's set forth by St. John of the Cross in Ascent of Mount Carmel. Therefore, they're never able to reach much in the way of substance and purity since they don't journey on a straight and short road. St. John concludes the chapter by referring to his plan for writing a fourth book for beginners. Now, unfortunately, he never wrote that. However, all things happen for a purpose. So, I hope you enjoyed this uh, installment of Ascent of Mount Carmel. Please join us for the next one. In the meantime, please pray for the church.